Hi everybody, welcome to the show. This is episode 51, which is weird because that puts us off of our timeline of, I know I, when I first started, I put two episodes out on the first day. Um, so my 52 isn't um, going to be my potiversary because my potiversary is actually episode 54, which is weird. So <coughs> maybe I don't know how to count. Anything's possible. Um, anyway, episode 51, welcome to... 2022 knit goals, which aren't just knit goals, but also some other crafting goals of um, what I want to do for next year. Okay, now things are a little bit weird today because Tormund and Brienne are in here today and they're having one of their Like, oh my god, what do we call it? When they run around and everything's crazy. Zoomies. They both have the zoomies and they're playing and they're just being ridiculous. Which is exactly why I wanted to get him a kitten. That's all I'm saying. This is exactly what I got her for. Was so he could do this with her and he would leave me alone. But it's like having two kittens, so it's ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> so I apologize if you hear lots of ruckus in the background. <laughs> Could you describe the ruckus, sir? Um, let's start with what I'm wearing, which is also a finished item. This is the, um, oh, it's nitpicks. <laughs> um, Hold on, it'll come to me. Um, I did not write it down. Wool of the Andes. Worst is Wool of the Andes always worse than I'm not sure. This is in the colorway Jurassic. <coughs> Which is a beautiful clay green color. Um, and it, the top actually went way longer. It went um, quite a few inches from my hip bone. Um, and I usually do like an inch below my hip bone. And the weave is kind of a bit more open than I would typically like for these tops. However, like I have said before about Lola's sweaters, I like that some of them... I do them on the same needle every time I use the same pattern. Well, I mean, it's it's a customized pattern, so I I wrote it down. It's customized to her to her fit, just as this top is customized to my fit. So, even though you make them all the same, well, I have a DK version or a worsted weight version. Um, so, depending on how thin the yarn is, it can either be DK. Like I've made Aran weight on. The worsted weight version and it's turned out fine and if it's a thinner worsted like this could probably be made on the DK weight version probably because I have so much left over at the bottom like I've I could fold up a good three inches I'd say so I have an extra three inches on the bottom um however <laughs> I have like three or four more of these um, to make and I'm going to do them all the same way because um, I like that it's a little bit thinner and a little bit breezier um, because sometimes I do want a lighter weight because I do have some DK weight that are uh, warmer fibers like I have DK that is um, merino uh, alpaca and nylon and that is very very warm and then I have merino alpaca and cotton 
and that is very cooling even though they're both the same ZK weight. So since this is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, right, which is my favorite wool, um, probably because I love how it blocks so big. Um, so it's, it's, and then I think it comes in and settles in. So I'm excited to see how this is going to wear because uh, I wore it yesterday. Yeah, I put it on right before I went to bed because um, that kind of, you know, uh, I don't know what it does, but I like it. And so today I'm wearing it again to move around in it some more. Um, I was going to show you the little bit I had left, but I don't think I kept it. Because it was literally like this long. This is the first of the Wool of the Andes tops. And I, I'm pretty sure I have, I have, I think I have two grays mm. and a red or a blue. I don't remember. You're going to go inside if you don't stop. Stop it right now. Um, <clears throat> so those are still going to get done. Um, those still have to be done. Sorry, those still have to be done. Um, so when I have another uh, break um, in whatever, this is not a daytime thing. This is a after work and nighttime project. Um, because, you know, I schedule that. We're going to talk about scheduling anyway, so hold on. Um, I have another uh, finished item that is actually going to have to be uh, redone. So, surprise, surprise, I did the Brianna reunion capelet finally. <laughs> They're knocking things. I don't know. Okay, so... This is how I wear it. Um, I just cross this over and I have this lovely, lovely Viking looking um, shawl pin. I love these. I don't remember where I got this. I'm sure you could get them on Etsy or Amazon or somewhere. So you poke it through both layers and then you put it through this hole and then you just twist like that and it holds and I love the look of it oh my god it is so I don't know what the word is old medieval whatever oh. that end did not get cut uh, because I'm redoing it oh, what is that Oh, who knows? It's probably, so, oh, I bet it's soap. I think I put the soap thing in it. Anyway, um, my problem with this is that it's very floppy, and that is not what I wanted for this, and it's a little too short back there. Um, now, the one I did make of this was a very, very firm. I don't know if you can see. It's kind of a bit holy. Yeah, you can see that. Um, I don't know why I'm showing you the ugly inside. Um, so I made these on nine millimeter needles. And if you make this, do your wrists a favor and use straight needles. Cause I tried to use my Chowgu four inch tips and oh my God, I was like this, like I, it was like, I could not grab it. It was terrible. So use straight needles. Um, and I had five skeins of this, and I didn't even use up two. I caked up three, okay? And so I used a whole one and then this much of the second one. So I decided, since it came out so floppy, which is not at all what I wanted, um, I'm going to take this out. Since I used one and maybe a half, I'm going to double strand since I have five. I'm going to double strand um, whatever <coughs> I'm going to double strand and I'm going to use um, I 
think 10 millimeter to the nine millimeter. So we're going from a 13 to a 15, I think. Um, if it needs it, I actually might try again on the 13s, but I'm not sure if that's gonna, you know, this is why I hate bulky yarn because it's so hard to know what it's gonna work up to. God, this is just, it's soap everywhere. It's like three spots have it. I don't know what that is. <sighs> um, so this is finished, but I'm going to redo it. Um, and now I'm not sure when I'm going to redo it. So because of other reasons. Okay, so I am going to redo it. I'm just not sure when I'm going to redo it. Um, and the why, I'm not sure when I'm going to redo it, I'm going to talk about it in a minute, but I'm going to bring you to whips, to my only whip, which is my two layer cashmere hat in Aran weight. Um, so this is where we're at, which you're not going to be able to see because it's black. You get sick of like me showing you things that are black that you can't see. Um, so I did eight again in the round pinhole. There you go, pinhole. And don't worry about those spaces there at the top because this is going to be double layered. But you can see the rest of it doesn't have holes like that. It's just in the very top. Because I start with um, a crochet hook, and I think that is probably why. Um, this is not, this does not really have a pattern. I pinhole cast on eight, and then at the next um, row, I increase all. So you increase eight, and then you do an even round, and you increase eight until you get to whatever size you want your hat to be. I went with 120 stitches because I think that's going to be a nice size hat. I am not sure how far I'm going to get though, because I'm almost out of yarn and I don't think this hat would even fit on my head yet, like fit down on my head yet. So I'm not sure this is doable in the two skeins because I have another skein. But you just work until you run out of yarn and then you close it up. So, I mean, you can decrease or you can just, yeah, I'm going to decrease. I'm not just going to close it up. I'm going to decrease because the beginning took me 20, the beginning to get to my uh, thing took 20 grams. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to work until I have 20 grams left, probably a little bit less, maybe like 18 grams. And then um, I'll close it up. But if that doesn't work, if I have a real long tail and I can get another couple rows, I probably will work this up until I absolutely cannot work anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to see how long of a tail I left. Yeah, I left kind of a, I left a, a long enough tail to Torm. Anyway, I'll have more on that as we near completion. Um, this is my, what I work on at night, um, cause it's completely mindless. It's just stuck in it in the run. You totally could put, um, a textured pattern if you wanted to. I did my sock head hats with the Hermione sock, um, pattern, which is, makes a really, really pretty texture. Okay, so that is all, surprisingly, that is all I have for you for whips. And you may be thinking, um, where is the witchling? Uh, it's uh, been frogged and it's been abandoned. And I'm currently gauge swatching uh, the sport weight. Um, I also started another sweater, the Zephyr sweater that I've been wanting to do for like three years now or some ridiculous amount of time. And the yarn I picked for it, I absolutely hate because it's Barocco vintage, which means it's mostly 
acrylic and nylon. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. It is so slippery. I hate it, hate it, hate it. And I have six skeins. So I did find a crochet pattern that I think I want to make. It's just from Lion Brand and it's a top down crochet, like double crochet um, cardigan, just v-neck, you know, just straight down. Very, very boring. Um, it has no shaping, so I think I'm going to do it with some shaping. And it does have um, buttons, so I got to figure a way to get around that. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that because what I'm doing right now, since the Witchling didn't work out, since the Zephyr didn't work out, I also couldn't get gauge on the Zephyr on that yarn. Because like you block it, nothing happens because it's mostly acrylic and I'm like, I'm not heat blocking this because then you can't use the rest of the yarn and I'm like, I'm not doing this. So I should have known better than to buy that yarn. I should have known better. I knew better and I did it anyway because I listened to someone in the projects that said, this is the perfect yarn for this and it was not. You cannot see the stiff de definition of the, it has this, um, st it starts at the back and it has this collar and then a panel that goes all the way down both sides. And it's really, really gorgeous. It's got like this, it's, I thought it was cable, but it's not cable. It's a t like a twisted stitch kind of where you, cr it's a cross, you cross the stitch over, but in the Baraco vintage, because it's so slippery you can't even see the stiff definite it just looks like you messed up it doesn't even look pretty so I'm like well I don't want to do this really kind of difficult stitch throughout this entire thing when you can't even see it like I was getting irritated and plus the yarn was so slippery I didn't want to work with it um, for an entire cardigan you know what I mean I was like I don't want to be using this for weeks and weeks. I don't want to be working with this. So I, since I have six skeins of it, I was like, well, let's look for like a crochet outer sweater because it's acrylic. I'm not going to wear it next to my skin. So I was looking for something I could wear over a sweater, like my blanket cardigan that I can wear over something else. Um, cause I don't want acrylic next to me. It makes me sweaty and I don't like it. So <clears throat> that's what's happening right now. I'm actually gauge swatching all of my sweater quantities right now um, on different needles to see which fabric I like because the witchling was like 20 stitches per four inches on five, five millimeter on sport and on DK and I could not get that at all. I could not, I could not get it. And when I did it on a five, it was so holy. I was like, I'm never going to wear this as a sweater. It was terrible. So I took every, seriously, every sweater quantity that I have and I, I swatched, like I looked at the weight and I decided which needles I wanted to swatch it with. And I just have sport weight left. I also have fingering weight left, but I'm like, I might wait on the fingering a little bit. Maybe I'm not sure. Cause I, I'm not going to make a fingering sweater right this second. But I mean, if I'm on a roll and I want to make some more gauge swatches, I'm just going to go ahead and make some gauge swatches, you know, just to have them done. Um, that way when I have those done, I'm going to measure those and then I'm going to go through Ravelry because you can search by gauge. You can search by gauge. And that is how I have found sweaters that I can make. So once I have those, I'm going to, because I love Ravelry, you can do um, the advanced search. There's so many things you can do. You can go down, you can do raglan sleeves adult size, top down, seamless, blah, blah, blah. You can pick exactly what you want in a sweater. Um, so that is what I'm planning to do because those ones, there 
goes. Because I couldn't get those to work, I'm going to um, just pop the gauge into Ravelry and see what comes up. And then I'm hoping I can take the chart of the witchling and put that in. And um, I mean, that was why I wanted the witchling anyway, was for that bottom chart, because all the sweaters I had seen had all the stuff up here. And I didn't want stuff up here because I'm going to wear either a v-neck or a scoop neck or I'm going to wear a shawl like I, I don't need this up here. I don't like stuff around my neck, so I don't like sweaters up, they're like they're too heavy. So um, I don't like the color work here because it's going to be covered up by a shawl anyway. But I like the thought of it around the bottom, the hem, uh, because then I'm usually wearing black top and black pants so I could get a little bit of color in there to break up, you know, my silhouette a little bit. I thought it would look nice. Oh God, they're both attacking Lola. You guys leave Lola alone. They're like the Siamese cats from Lady and the Tramp. That they terrorize the dog, remember? Lady. We are Siamese, if you please. Um, that was like one of my favorite movies when I was little. So is Fox and the Hound. And I haven't watched either of them since I was a child because I'm afraid they're going to be sad. But I still watch Sleepy Beauty, just the Maleficent parts. Um, what was I talking about? Okay, so the witchling has been abandoned for right now. These cats are being absolutely awful, but also very cute. So I wanted to go over some of the goals that we set last year, so you know where I'm coming from. And in another episode that's coming up in December, we'll go over what I have finished this year, but that's not this episode. This episode is what do I want to do next year. But... To do that, I want to take you to this time last year when we did this. Well, when I did this. I actually did this in January. Um, so my nickels for last year was 24 items for the year. One that I dyed myself and just one general project. So two projects a month, which we have surpassed that because then the shawls came along and ruined everything. So... I wanted to do one dye project a month. We did that. I wanted to make a pair of shorts. We did that. Um, I have sweaters, colorful yoke, which I decided no. The Zephyr, which I attempted. And the Riverside, <clears throat> which I have not swatched for because it is a fingering weight. And I'm not ready to do a fingering weight, but I, I might do it um, January or February because... It's a lighter weight sweater. I don't, I'm not going to want to wear it now, right? So the Zephyr and the Riverside are still going to get done, just not this year. So those are like being pushed over to next year. Um, the Earth Star Shawl, again, didn't get to that. Mittens, socks with a question mark? Something with mohair, which is actually next month's dye project <laughs> um and then i had wanted to do these tops in sport weight and fingering and in order to do the sport weight i needed to do the um shorts so i would know the stitch count for around my belly part because it's the exact same um so we didn't get to that this year because shawls shawls took over everything um, I also didn't get to the fingering because I think there was a top I was going to make that was the fingering and I was going to wait and see what that stitch count gave me because I don't want to try to just come up with the stitch count on my own. Um, for Because once I have the this stitch count... For the ribbing, that's my total stitch count. So from that, I can take my back stitch count and my front stitch count and then engineer the top, okay? Does that make sense? But I need that around that finished measurement first. Because that's really where the top needs to fit is around 
the belly because that's the tube this top really doesn't matter because it's it's not really doing any it's just covering there's no back here it's not like it's supporting anything it doesn't matter in fact these were just a smidge too long I think for how big this blocked out <coughs> so those were the goals from uh, last year so 2022 nickels number one I decided I'm going to continue with a monthly dye project. I really feel like, especially because my shop's not going so well, um, I really want that reason to be in the dye studio, to get in there, even if it's just for me. Even if it's just for me, that's fine with me. It'll just be for me to dye whatever I want. Um, However, not all of them are going to, I'm not going to share all of the formulas with you. If it's something I'm not going to sell, I will share the formula. I will for sure share the technique. I will share uh, things that don't matter. Like, I just won't give you the breakdown of my depth of shade and all of that. Um, but I will try to give you enough information that you can make it on your own, just in a different color, okay? So you'll be in charge of making your own colors. I'll probably still tell you what depth of shade I use, but I'm not gonna give you my color formula. If it's something I'm going to, if it's something I'm hoping to sell, I'm not going to share all of that with you, but I'll give you enough that you can recreate it on your own, just in different colors, okay? Um, cause I think that's important. I want you to be able to recreate it just not exactly as I do just because it's something special that I want to offer in my job. That's the only reason. Um, I also, um, want to add one crochet project a month, uh, because I miss crocheting and I had a lot of fun making the blanket cardigan, even though it was such a disaster um, even if it's something small so I do want to do one crochet project and it'll probably be um, I'm assuming it will be a wearable I'm not quite sure I don't have like that's only 12 crochet um, items that I haven't picked out yet so I will probably I I will have them I will actually have a list of them <laughs> of course I will I will have a list of you know, what crochet patterns I want to do. Um, I also have um, the sport and fingering weight tops. I want to at least do the sport top next year uh, after I finish the shorts, because remember we're reworking the shorts. Um, I'm going to focus on making garments instead of shawls. I'm going to take a break from shawls because I have a million of them. I also want to design a few mosaic shawls if I feel like it. I know we do still have the Malayla. Um, I'm not sure where she fits into all this because if the mood strikes me, of course I will just design a shawl because I have no choice. I have no choice. Um, I also want to continue to explore goth colorways to dye up. So I think what that means is I'm going to be on the lookout for a lot of more make-alongs, a lot of more. Did I just say that? A lot more, a lot more make-alongs and, um, you know, because people are always selling like, oh, we're usually Casa Pinka has, is doing, releasing some pattern and everyone's going to make it. And then all the dyers give out set, you know, have put out sets <coughs> for it and it's a big deal. So I want to take a look at stuff like that. And, um, just kind of do more, um, experimenting in my, for my colors, not just, um, colorways. Does that make sense? Um, also I have some, I have some, um, specific projects that I want to do. Um, I'm going to do the Earth Star Shawl, which is a cotton shawl. Is it crochet or knit? I'm not sure if it's crochet or knit. Earth Star Shawl that I had wanted to do 
not even this year. I wanted to do it last year and I never got to it. And then I didn't get to it this year because shawls. So I want to get that one done. I want to make the V-back tee out of my uh, Halloween minis from Hout Knit Yarn. That is my other plan. Then I also want to make a felted wrap uh, with some patterns that I have lying around. Not sure if I'm going to get to that this next year, um, but it, it will be like in the fall, winter. That's when I'm thinking of wanting to do that because so much goes into felting like first you have to make it and then you have to felt it and I'm I know there's some you got to decide if you're going to knit it or if you're going to crochet it because you can do either one and I have made it I have made some felted things before on purpose <laughs> um some felted yarn balls I made on purpose with uh, the patents roving patent, uh, it's like roving. It's not, it's not even really spun. Um, gorgeous colors, really, really gorgeous colors. Um, but I just have some patents just in a really ugly color. I think it's called harvest. It's like pink and green and yellow. I mean like burgundy and green and yellow and purple. I don't know. It's, I would never wear it. I could dye it black, but that was my thing. I want to work it up, figure out how big I need to make it so I know what size it's going to be when it's felted, roughly. I know you can't like 100% get there, but I want to figure that out. Um, if you know of a good source for that, please drop me a link below or some, tell me if you know somewhere where you get that info before I try to google my way down a rabbit hole um that i really want to try and do next uh when the weather returns like this time next year um i'm trying to think if there was any other knit and crochet things i don't really think i have any other Like I'm going to keep making more tops. I'm going to keep my scheduling the same where I schedule three, three times a day. So I'm just going to keep plugging in, you know, um, I'm going to do keep the scheduling where I do, uh, for the season and then per month. And we're just going to keep doing that way because it's working. I don't want to mess with it. Um, there is one more, um, So one more goal I have for next year that has absolutely nothing to do with knitting, but it's still craft relating. And that is that I want to complete one quilt square, I think a month or a week, depending. Um, I've always wanted to make a quilt. Like I've always wanted to make a quilt and I found this quilt as you go because I don't have a long arm, you know, machine for quilting. And I always thought it was amazing that you could make an actual like real blanket and I want to make myself a real blanket, like a twin sized blanket, um, a twin sized quilt. Like I've made myself a twin sized acrylic yarn granny square blanket. It's super heavy. Oh my God. It's so heavy that I don't like using it. Cause it's like, <laughs> see those weighted blankets. I'm like, this is terrible. And I like quilts because they're lighter and I have a bunch of, um, Halloween themed fabric. Um, so I'm going to do this. I don't know what pattern I'm going to do yet. I know I'm going to do a quilt as you go. My black, my backing is going to be black. Um, I haven't decided on the batting yet. I, cause I haven't decided how, um, how heavy I want it to, you know, I haven't decided anything about it actually, other than it's going to be Halloween-y because <laughs> I have a bunch of Halloween fabric that I don't have anything to do with. Um, and I also wanted to put the time in to quilt. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be a square a month, like if it's going to take me a week to make a square, if it's going to like, I'm not sure how that's going to fit in to my scheduling right now because I'm only scheduling for 
knitting time. Part of that too is because I want to eventually offer goth bags and I feel like I'm an okay sewer. I can sew a straight line. It's not hard for me to sew a straight line. Um, but I don't see sewing in a three-dimensional way in my head, the way I see knitting and crochet in my head. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. But if I look at a pattern and I read, you know, the increases are here and then I see how often you increase, I can understand the shaping of the thing. With sewing, I don't understand it at all. You're starting with a flat piece of fabric and I don't understand any of it. I really, really don't. I can do, um, like casings for elastic and a waist. <laughs> I can make skirts. Skirts are easy. That's, you know, one or two sides and hem. I have hemmed things. I know how to hem. So basically I can repair things. Um, but taking like straight on, I mean, I have made some bags. I've made some very, um, plain bags. I made like a tote bag. I mean, nothing at all special. I've used interfacing. Um, I can't do zippers. Zippers confuse me. I know they shouldn't, but they do. They really, really confuse me. Um, but there are some bags that I like that I would like to tweak and make them available in goth ways. Not this. I'm not sewing this. You can go to Whimsy Stitches and get these. And if you ask him, he probably has some gothy stuff. Or I know he had candy corns for Halloween. But I wanted to be able to have bags. I'd like to have stitch markers. I'd like to have yarn. Like I'd like to have one-stop gothy shop for everything. So, um, and since I cater to such a small... Um, population of knitters I don't think I'm gonna have trouble with all of that do you know what I mean keeping up with th how many of us are there yeah you pretty girl look at this pretty girl look at this pretty girl say hello Brian no, turn right away. say hello <gasps> hello my girl Brian baby Hi, aren't you cute? She's like, I'm laying down. What do you want? I'm sleepy. You want to sleep? And she adorable. She's so tiny. She got white on her, uh, right here. So they call it a pendant. She has a, a white underneath both her armpits <laughs> and a little bit of white on her belly, like five strands on her belly. I'm not even kidding. And like maybe 10 strands under each armpit. It's really, really funny. And I think she's got like two or three on her chin. But she's not grown up yet, so we won't know. I know, hi. How are you doing? She does this chirpy purr, like chirp and trilling purr, like a whistle. What are you looking at? Yeah, come here. She does not really like to be picked up. I think she's afraid to be picked up here. I know. No? Okay. She doesn't want to. Usually I just let her um, hang on to my robe. Say hello to the people. Hi. Say hello to the... No, turn around. Say hello to the people. I don't want to. She's super cute. Cause I want to figure out if we're keeping her or not, and I don't. I won't know that until I get her test results. Cause if she is sick, she can't stay here. Because that I have unvaccinated kittens every year here, it would be unsafe for me to have a uh, immune compromised adult cat. So Tormund, we didn't even know we were gonna. We could keep him until his tests all came back negative then we were phew. 
They're like, yes, let's adopt him then. So they get tested when they go in for their spay and neuter. So I want her like go in and get tested ASAP. So I know if we're going to keep her or not. Because I'm in love with her. I think she's fantastic. I think I'm still, so I think my main goal is one dyed project and one crochet project. So I think I'm still going to focus on having two projects a month. So dye project, I don't even know what I'm going to do for dye projects now. Like they could be anything. They don't have to be shawls because they've been shawls just because I had so many freaking shawls to do. So now the shawls are done. It could be anything. But see, the hard part of that is color. Because I don't wear a lot of color, guys. <laughs> I like black. So I'm not sure how I'm going to... I'm not sure how I'm going to come up with a dye project every month. Because that's a lot. That's 12 projects. And I already have two. I have December and January's lined up. Pretty sure they both have mohair. I'm like 90% sure they both have mohair. I'm actually not 100% sure, so. <laughs> Am I ever 100% sure about anything? No, unless it's, do I want to do this? And my answer is 100% and no, I do not. Um, everyone's sleeping finally. Now that I'm done, everyone's sleeping. Whatever. Um, so I have to get finished my gauge swatches and then soak them and then block them and figure out what I am doing with these sweaters. Um, cause I wanted to have a sweater done this month and it's already like, we're past the halfway mark. I'm not going to have a sweater done this month now. Right? Yeah. Cause it's the 17th. 18th, it's the 19th that this is going to be uploaded on the 19th. There's no way I'm getting a sweater done in like 10 days. So looks like we're short of projects. So now I'm going to have to scramble and come up with something else to make for this, the rest of this month. Cause I'm not going to be able to, st I'm not going to start a sweater now. Anyway, I've been talking forever and I don't want to talk anymore. So I'm going to say goodbye and, um, I'll see you next week for planning December projects. And hopefully I'll have a good sweater to show you. Uh, planned for next time since that's all up in there who knows what's gonna happen um but yeah i'm gonna focus the next 10 days on getting um everything done we're just not gonna get a sweater done this month which is really disappointing especially because i was so looking forward to the witchling i really really wanted that sweater really really badly and it just was not working for me. I probably could have could have redone it and just but see I don't know that I even liked that fabric I got and I got 23 stitches print instead of 20 so that was even too big for like too holy for me. So I'm just gonna have faith in these swatches that they're gonna show me what I need to know and then Ravelry database will just let me plug in that gauge and it's gonna bring me the most perfect sweaters in every base. I think I'm going to do the fingering weight base too, since I'm have nothing to do, right? Where I'm not going to get a sweater done. So I might as well gauge swatch. I have to gauge swatch two fingering bases, the base that I use the most, which is what I use my shawls and that Baraco, whatever it is. Because I need to, I have three of those. I need to make a sweater out of that, or I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And it's like a cherry, it's like a dark cherry color, so it'll be perfect. I don't even have to mess with it. So we'll probably see that in January, February. I'll finally do um, a fingering weight sweater, but I don't know how I'm going to get through those sleeves. Okay. I'll see you next week for planning December projects. Planning December projects, right? 
how is it even December? How is it even the end of 2021? This is like, I think I've been confused since 1999. I think 1999 is when time stopped making any sense at all because we're like in the 20s. We missed the aughts and the tens, and now we're in the twenties. It's very, cause I remember the seventies and I remember the eighties and I remember the nineties. And then the last 20 years is like a blur, like a big giant blur of confusion. <laughs> It's insane. It's insane. I wonder how kids like that were born in like the 2000s because my nephew was born in what? 2004. My first nephew was born in 2004 and then the other one was born in 2009. So I wonder how they see those. If they have a clear marker of the decades, right? Because I don't have a clear marker of those decades. It's weird, isn't it? Anyway, I'll see you next week. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. Bye.